Well, good evening. What another beautiful evening, December the 5th. Well, I'm walking into the park, the Bethel Heritage Park, and I want to give you a tour of the Christmas lights and the decorations. But it isn't just for decorations. There are stories, at least the nativity scene. And we have the angels singing. And, uh, you know, whoever else. Just look at that, eh? I, uh, just a, a beautiful evening. And uh, here you have the carolers. I guess that's what you would call them. The carolers singing as I was just listening to my iPhone walking, Silent Night, Holy Night. And what a beautiful song. Continues to to stand the test of time. And uh, there you go. Beautiful. Just absolutely gorgeous uh, that we see here. And then uh, as we walk along, you see some of the decorations in the... Along, along the street, the houses. I believe that is 6th Street here in Winkler. And, uh, you know, as nice as it is tonight, I would, well, I guess we can't have great big gatherings. Sorry, I just about pulled a boo-boo there. But at the same time, uh, come here with either one, two, or three people. I guess we, we may be able to, and... Uh, you can just uh, absolutely enjoy the festive season. No, this isn't about buying. This isn't about shopping. This isn't about partying. This is about the gospel story. As, uh, well, Luke 2, of course, the various gospels have various versions of it and uh, you know it's just uh, wonderful look at that here we have and I've shown this to you before during the daytime but now we have the actual scene lit up Let's take a look at that for a moment you know there may be a time when we may not be able to do that here the way we have today and all the years before that. But here we have a beautiful, beautiful nativity scene. Away in a manger. Wow, what a wonderful time. I have been meaning to come here, and I may just be here every evening. What a time to worship. Yes, these are statutes. These are displays. These are lit up, whatever you may call but it's about as real as I need to experience it right now. Joseph, Mary, the donkey, camel, and the wise man standing in front of the camel, coming to worship the baby Jesus. He was human, and he is God. What a distinction from anything ever to have come into this world. A little baby, human, and God. You know, he left his splendor and glory on high to come down to this earth because God the Father sent his only begotten Son so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. My, oh my, oh my, I am moved to tears for what that baby Jesus, Mary, the, the mother of Jesus, and Joseph, the husband to Mary, and of course we have God the Father, Jesus the Son, and we have the Holy Spirit. That's exactly how Mary became pregnant with the baby Jesus. She says, how will this happen? 
I have never been with a man. She says, you will be visited on high by the Holy Spirit, and you shall conceive a son, and his name shall be called Jesus. Wonderful, the Counselor, the Prince of Peace, Almighty God. Wow, this is even better than I had ever envisioned experiencing the Christmas story right here. Come, if you can, by yourself, one or two people. Don't have to make any commotion. Don't have to make any point. I know we can worship Jesus anywhere. But today, it is something that is so beautiful. Wow. Thank you to the city of Winkler for continuing to honor the birth of Jesus. As I said, many places you will not do that. This year that we're doing it last year. And then we have this, the three candles. You know, it doesn't really matter what they stand for. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Oh my, what a blessed time to enjoy. Here I stand in total peace, in total commitment, surrender. You know, when my wife was going in for her first attempt at a major surgery with some 15, 20 people around the bedside, and somebody asked, Judy, do you have anything to say? And it was quite a risky surgery. You, know, you always have the 50-50 chance. But she had a poor heart. A lot of people didn't know that. And uh, somebody asked her, have you got anything to say? And she got up on her arm, I believe. She still could. She was paralyzed from the shoulders down, but her arms worked totally. And she quietly and calmly said, there was a book that she and I read every evening. We were almost through it eight times. Living the Victorious Christian Life by the uh, anonymous Christian. Well, it uh, came out this way. The key part of that book, and there's so much to it, and that's why we kept reading, reading, reading. Even a few days before, or day, the night before she went to the hospital and left home for the final time, we uh, read part of that book. We would read a chapter, we would read a page, sometimes a paragraph. And uh, there was a part in that book that says, you know, if you really want to live a victorious Christian life, you need to surrender your surrender to God. And she shared how, what that meant to her. And uh, totally calmly, confidently, and she went into the surgery, and that's the one they had to shut down an hour into it, it was a Sunday morning. Thank you, Pastor Sullivan, for calling in and uh, praying with her on the speakerphone. And uh, they had to stop it because her heart was doing funny things. But nevertheless, she came out of that. And then she went back in, I believe, four days later, Thursday, Wednesday. And she did have the surgery, but the surgery was a success, but it didn't take long. And uh, the tumor moved up and today she's in glory. This is her third Christmas in heaven. This is my third Christmas without her. No, I know I'm not the only one to have lost a spouse and that's not this what I'm talking about. 
But I do remember when my father passed away in 1984. I really did think nobody had ever lost a dad before. How come the world didn't stop? How come everything went on as normal? Why my dad passed away? Shouldn't we stop? <laughs> well, we as a family stopped. But I also remember leaving my mother that first night. I guess maybe we stayed there that first night. Somebody did. And uh, saying to the family that for us, we can go home and life can return to normal. As normal as it could be. But for mother, it had forever changed. I just love that. Yes, things do forever change. And uh, looking at COVID-19 and all the fallout surrounding it, churches going to court, wanting to worship, people standing up and saying no, but we can go to Walmart and Superstore and the parking lots can fill up. No social distancing there. They were parked side by side, could hardly get out of the car that we parked beside today. It was that close. And yet we can't have a drive-in church. Well, who knows where all of this is going to go. And then I had a chance this morning to uh, have our regular Zoom men's get-together. One man, John Rumpel, from Steinbeck originally, I believe, is now in Vienna, Austria. And we had Randy Volgamuth, who heads it up. He's originally from Landmark and lives in Steinbeck, but is working in Melford, Saskatchewan. And uh, Lewis and Matt, I forget their last names, but also both from Saskatchewan. And uh, we started this at the beginning of COVID-19. And it was really, as Randy said, he thought maybe once, maybe twice, at the most three times. Well, I haven't been at each one, but tried to be. But I know Randy has hosted each one. And uh, there we go. We have been going since March. And today is December the 5th. What a blessing to share with four different men, different walks of life, but all believing in the baby Jesus in the manger of Bethlehem and the star. And you know something? I love that part when uh, God told the shepherds and the shepherds were out in the field watching their flock by night and the angels of heaven opened up and they began to sing glory it's in the highest I think it is and uh, we're telling the shepherds go see the baby Jesus the Messiah in Bethlehem follow the star follow the star bow and follow the star they did what a beautiful beautiful scenario see they didn't have social media they didn't have news media. And they didn't have... And guess what? God didn't announce it to all the people in, in the major cities. No. Amen. No, he didn't. He uh, announced it to the shepherds. The shepherds... 
left. And they went to see and worship. And they went back and they declared what they had seen. And that's how the message of the birth, birth of Jesus, the Messiah, was announced to the world of that time. 2,000 years later, we celebrate that birth. 2,000 years later, we still sing the songs, the beautiful Christmas songs. I encourage you. There's so much very good music that you can listen to. Listen to the beautiful Christmas carols, however music you like. I love the traditional carols. And uh, so here I am talking to you from the Bethel Heritage Park. Appreciate those people watching live. Appreciate those people that may have a chance to see it later. It's really about telling the story of Jesus. That was my prayer request this morning, that I can continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ as I have for many years. And uh, I encourage you this Christmas season, can't do all those other things that we've used to do, be innovative, do something different, something that stands for eternity. Yeah, I guess if we go caroling, I'm not sure how that will work this year. But uh, I'm going to continue to sing Christmas carols by myself on Shmuel. Yes, I even record some of them. But I am you know, need to keep my voice in shape or get it back into shape. Try to do a little singing today. But the good Lord's help, we'll do what we can. But here I am today sharing with you the Christmas story. I've been meaning to do that for some time. And I probably will share various versions of it from now until Christmas, depending on, of course, the weather and snow and so kinds, those kinds of things. So may God bless you somewhere, sometime, somehow. I'll see you again.